Well, um, this, this certainly isn't good. Uh, one of the world's largest YouTube channels that makes cruising content, they've been banned from filming on a, one of the world's newest cruise ships by one of the world's largest cruise companies. Uh, it's kind of what, what they do. It's kind of what a lot of us do. Uh, what does this mean for us and for you? Um, yeah, cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face, for your face on the 11th of March. And while I've cleared the docket, we're just going to talk about this one story. Let's talk about the YouTube channel that got banned by a cruise line from filming. Of course, we're talking about the cruise tubers, Ben and David. And let's start by looking at the Channelytics Currently, they have 242,000 subscribers. I think they're getting close to five to 10,000 subscribers per month. Last month, they're in the last 30 days, they've done 2.29 million views, 2.29 million views. And uh, overall, in the life of their channel, 53.7 million views. And I give you those stats just to establish the fact that these are big time cruise tubers that garner a lot of views that have a big audience. And if you've never checked out their videos, they're very talented. The production quality is very high. They're very entertaining and they go on to cruise ships and they give really detailed looks at cruise ships and reviews of cruise ships. And one thing that I really think has built credibility with their audience is that their reviews are very balanced, balanced and fair. I've seen glowing reviews from Ben and David. I've seen middle of the road reviews from Ben and David. David, and I've seen critical, critical reviews from Ben and David. Whatever it is, I feel like they do a good job of telling people exactly what it is. Now with that foundation laid, let's talk about the incident that just occurred. Ben and David booked a $5,200 cruise on the new MSC World Europa. And they were on the ship three or four days going around filming the cruise ship, doing what they do. But it sounds like on the fifth day, and maybe when they got to the suite area, they ran into some trouble. And look, I don't want to give all of the details of the story. That's their story to tell. I'll leave that video linked in the pinned comments, uh, or you can go to their channel. It's the one that's the, the newest video. And the, you know, the fallout, the summary of what happened to them is that they were told that they were not allowed to do any more filming at all at all on this MSC cruise ship. And from what I can tell, that even included filming with their phone, like uh, taking pictures of each other with their phone. They were told that they were, you know, not to do that. And it sounded like they were being observed pretty closely. And so they made the decision with three or four days left of their cruise that they were just going to not go on that cruise anymore. They disembarked the cruise in Rome and went home, uh, citing the fact that, you know, they weren't really on that cruise for a vacation. They were on that cruise to work, to bring content to the cruising community, to show people out there interested in this new MSC cruise ship, what it was like. Th that's the basics. That's the bones of the story. Again, go check out them telling the details of the story but I do want to talk about a few things when it comes to content creators going on cruise ships and the ability to film on cruise ships. This is an interesting leveled thing here. So as far as I know, any person with a cell phone can go on and film on a cruise ship without any impedance from the cruise line. There's no hard rule against making videos with your cell phone. I don't know of any hard rules about making videos on a small camera. I do know that once you get up and you have some production type equipment that they will say, look, are you a film crew? Is this something professional? You might have to have authorization. So sometimes if you're using a gimbal, I know those guys use like a gimbal and stuff. They have a small camera, but they got a little bit of a rig. It's more obvious than just a small camera. I'm not saying that this is what brought them attention. I think they do a good job of being discreet, but I know from my personal experience and dealing with other people that once your rig gets a little bigger, then cruise lines start to notice it a little more. And I think there is some threshold that if uh, you're considered a film crew, a production company, that you might have to get some sort of authorization 
But to tell those guys that they can't even use their cell phone to film, it really becomes a head scratcher to me. So you know, let, let's look at it like this. If they don't want anybody filming on a cruise ship, then essentially they would have to ban cell phones from cruise ships. And so is it the idea that their cruise ship is being filmed or their cruise operation is being filmed or is it that other people are being filmed? Or is it the idea that they don't want people with a substantial size audience being able to film? Right? Who cares if Joe down the street uh, takes video or even says, I had a bad dinner, and he shows it to 10 people that live in his neighborhood or some of his family that he can get to watch their travel films? Cruise Line probably doesn't care about that. But, you know, one of the cruises that Ben and David were critical of was their MSC cruise from three years ago where they had a bad situation, where they got yelled at for filming. They were coming back to try it again. And from all signs, they were having a great time on MSC. And so I don't know it's as much about the filming of things and people as much as it's about the ability to show the things and the people that you film to the masses. Again, you know, almost a quarter million subscribers getting two point something million views a month. There's a lot of eyeballs on that content. And maybe once MSC realized who they were dealing with, they wanted to shut it down but I, I don't, you know, like I've read through some of the comments over there on that video. I, I don't think shutting it down is going to, to be good. It brings us to the broader conversation about content creation and where we are in the cruise industry. I can tell you this, cruise companies actively work with content creators, giving them free cruises, sometimes incentivizing them with additional money to come on their cruise ship and to film their cruise ship and film their experience. A lot of times those interactions are directed by the cruise company. There's a contractual obligation hey, we'll give you all of this stuff, but this is what you have to give us in the form of content. And so that actually happens. And I think most ethical creators disclose when that happens. Hey, I got paid to do this, to see these experiences. This is the kind of thing that happened. This was the nature of our agreement with the cruise company. And then there's just somebody who pays for their cruise and goes out and films it and tries to get an audience to connect with their experience or their expertise or what they're showing. And I think that's the bulk of content creators right now. Certainly Ben and David paid for that cruise to bring it to the YouTube channel to show you guys. And it is a business endeavor for them. And so I don't think that's any secret. I think everybody's above board. You've got, you know, creators paid by the cruise line. You've got people that are freelancing out there. And look, honestly, I think you need both. I think you need a voice that's looking at something critically saying, this is good, this is bad. But I also think it's good for cruise lines to have content creators that they pay so that they can show audiences what they think is valuable when it comes to their cruise line. I think that this is a good ecosystem. But, you know, maybe the challenge right now is, you know, since the pandemic, there's a ton of people that are doing it. And I still sit under the same philosophy. The more people that make cruising content and put it on the Internet and get eyeballs on it is good for everybody else. Like, you know, I've talked to people that like, oh, I watched a small creator with a thousand subscribers or 50 subscribers and your video was recommended next because of that. And now we follow La Lido Loca. I always say thumbs up to that. Get out there. If you have a passion to create, if you have a passion to capture your memories, get out there, throw it on the internet, show people the cruise life so we can get more people in it. And I think it's good, good all the way around. You get more people into cruising. Sometimes, you know, I get more people. Sometimes other people get more people. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, aren't there too many people doing this? I don't think so. But the final piece is a question I've wrestled with a lot. Do content creators lessen the cruise experience for paying passengers? I think some passengers would say yes. If, you know, their cruise is constantly interrupted with people with cameras in their faces and capturing people that may not want to be on film. I think if it's that obtrusive and really disruptive, I think it could be. But conversely, I know a lot of people that are 
somewhat grateful for cruise content creators that are going out there and helping them make their decisions by showing them things that they may not choose to do themselves or can't do themselves at that time. And with a plethora of cruising options from cruise companies to cruise excursions to cruise destinations, the more visual references you have for places and companies and cruise ships and excursions and you know attractions, the more visual representation you have of that. I think at the end of the day, it helps the cruising community make better cruising decisions, uh, you know, what they want to do with their cruising dollar. Again, like all things in life, really in, in the world, it, it's all things in balance. And sometimes things get out of balance and they're brought back into balance, that kind of thing. I think it's like that with content creation and cruisers and that kind of thing. Uh, but Honestly, you know, what's the deal with MSC and Ben and David? Did they get smacked down because they were filming on a cruise ship and they don't want anybody filming on a cruise ship? Or did they get smacked down because they were critical of MSC and they have a big audience? And interestingly, I don't know of anybody else that MSC is told not to film. I recently did a ship tour of the MSC Seashore. Make sure you check that out. I'll leave that linked at the end. My sister-in-law, Wanda, recently filmed on an MSC cruise ship. There's tons of MSC um, content out there, both positive and negative, about MSC. So I don't know if this is just the beginning of a crackdown by MSC. I certainly hope it's not. I certainly hope it's not something that cruise lines are considering. What do you think? What, where, where's the balancing point? Uh, do you think there's value in content creation? Do you think cruise ships should ban anybody from filming? Do you think it's censorship and tyranny? Um, an interesting story, and I hope it all resolves well. Thank you guys so much for checking out the show today. Subscribe for more. Hit that like button on the way out. This is Tony for Loud Little Oka. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Carousing. Bye. Cruise news.